Hello everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. If you're new to the channel, please hit the little square down there and uh, subscribe. Hit the notifications bell and you'll get notified when I produce a new video. And I do produce a video nearly every day. So, as you can see, we've got the light grey mat out. And if you're used to, if you're finished my channel, you know that when the light grey mat comes out, we know it's for beginners. It's a beginner's build series or something. Or it's a beginner's video about how to do a certain aspect in scale modelling. This is going to be an actual simple beginner's build. As some of you will know, I have got some new paints coming from Australia to try out, which are called Outlaw Paints. And I have kindly been sent them by Sprubox, who is going to be the UK distributor for those paints. And I have just about enough to do a 172nd scale small aircraft. And the colours I have are pretty much around the RAF um, World War II early. So I've been out and bought this kit. Whoops. By now you probably would have seen the review of it. It's a very, very simple kit. In fact, it can be bought in the starter set. But I'm not going to build this as a starter set. I'm going to see if I can get you on your way without building a model as a starter set kit. One, I don't think the glue in a starter set is very good. Um, I don't like the fact it's in a tube. Um, I would much rather see something like Revell Contactor with a, you know, with a metal spout or something. Um, and also the paints can be a bit troublesome in Airfix. I do know that if you get in touch with Airfix, they will actually replace them for you. Um, but there have been some issues with the lids leaking and the and air in or whatever and the paint's drying up. So I'm going to do this build using the Outlaw paints. Now, the Outlaw paints will not be part of the beginner's build. So what you'll have to do is imagine you're building this without painting it at all. Because that's what I'm going to do as far as these videos are concerned. When I have to paint the cockpit, I'll break away, I'll paint the cockpit. That will be part of the Outlaw, Outlaw Paints video. When that, then, then I'll just suddenly come back and it'll all be green. So what you will see is like from that to that, it's going to be grey plastic and then it's going to be green. And in the interim, there will be an Outlaw Paints video showing how I painted the cockpit green. So we'll go from there. So, but everything else, like applying the decals, all the building, all the seam filling, all the sanding, all the sprue removal, everything else to do with this model will be on this video, okay? And I've had many requests to build a small, cheap model, and that's what I'm doing. This is $8.99 on Amazon. I got it delivered free because I've got Prime. Um, you can get this for $8.99 from Airfix as well. Um, I don't know if they charge delivery. I think they probably do. But uh, I know that I ordered this yesterday on Amazon. I knew it, came, but it was going to come today. And the reason I've chosen this in particular is because it's got the black and white undersides. As you can see on the back here, we have the black and white undersides. And I have the black and white in the, um, in the Outlaw paints. I don't have the sky colour. And the whole objective of the exercise is to use Outlaw paints. Obviously, where we've got silver undercarriage bays... Um, and anything that's like the, the, the spinner is, is like a crimson red will have to use paints that I've already got. They've called it scarlet. We'll have to use paints I've already got um, because I don't have those in the Outlaw paints. So first of all, we'll have a quick look at the tools I'm going to use. I know you're thinking, oh, he's covering tools again. But there will be people that won't have seen that. And believe me, this is going to be over in less than five minutes. So the first thing we need to do is consider how we're going to cut the parts off the sprues. Now when we look in the box, we get the bag out. Obviously I've already done a review of this, so this bag is already open. We're going to get our instructions out of the box. If I come out, there we go. And we're going to take our decals, or decals if you're on the other side of the pond from me. And we're going to put them back in the box, come here. And put them back in the box to keep them safe. Okay, so basically what we've got here... This here, the frame, in America it's called a frame, in the UK we call it a sprue, okay? This is the waste part of the model, all the parts in here are the parts you're going to use. And the first thing we have to consider is how are we going to get these parts off? Now I know what you're thinking, you've got a grey background and you've got grey parts. Yeah, I know, it's a beginner series, so I'm going to have a grey part, grey background with grey parts. Um, but basically we've got our sprue, and you can see here that we've got to cut it off. Now... If you're of a certain age, you'll remember being a youngster and you'd come along and you'd just try and snap all the bits off the sprue and invariably you'd break something. What we need to do now is cut them off. So we're going to get like a, something like this, which is a sprue cutter. Now these here, these come from Dave Coley's Emporium.co.uk. I'm not plugging him at all, um, but 
these will come if you buy a half decent kit from Dave Kohler's Emporium invariably you will get a pair of these thrown in the kit for free believe me these things are amazing um, I cut I, I use these for cutting brass rod and as you can see the blades aren't damaged at all if I've got another pair of cutters here I haven't but I can tell you now that if I use Tamiya cutters for cutting brass rod it makes a right mess of them and I can show you if I've got any here we go there's some cheap cutters they've been used for cutting brass rod and look at the state of them so these things are absolutely great so if you're on a budget get a kit from Dave Coley and you'll probably get these in the box okay so there we go they're ProTech modeling tools I believe that's his own company well, that's the company there www.davecoleysemporium.co.uk great website go and have a look some fantastic prices and he does some great offers as well so there's your cutters now I'm not going to use those because I have these and these are a far more professional version of that basically um, but these cost over £30 and as I say these you can get cutters like this for only a few pounds or as I say from Dave Coley you often get them for free uh, so I'm going to use those so I'm not going to use those I'll use these these are my Tamiya ones and it's got some silicon in there where I've been used them cut some silicon so we'll get rid of that so there we go so that's our Tamiya cutters so we use those for cutting the parts off the sprue so that's our first tool the second thing we're going to need is a knife because when we cut the parts off we need to be able to trim away the sprues we need to scrape away mold seams and what I've got here is a scalpel you can use a retractable knife anything as long as it's sharp don't ever ever use a blunt knife a knife is it's most dangerous when it's blunt that's when you slip that's when you cut yourself so there we go I'm using that that's a Swan Morton number um, number three handle you can see in there the number three okay Swan Morton number three handle and that's a 10a blade and I tend to only ever use two blades and that's the number 10 and the number 10A. All right. So that's the that's the knife I'll be using. I may use that one as well. But, uh, we shall see. I'll probably just use I'm going to try and keep it to a minimum. Then for doing small parts, again, Dave Cody's Emporium.co.uk. Sometimes you get a pair of cutters like these. Sometimes you get a little set of tweezers. But you know, it generally puts in a little freebie in the boxes. You know, you don't expect to buy a four ninety nine kit and get a free pair of these. That's not going to happen. But if you're buying something for sort of twenty pound or something, you will probably get something for free if he's still doing it. I mean, he may have stopped doing it now. I don't know, but um, he always has done for the time I've known him. So there we go. So there's a pair of tweezers for our smaller parts, and then for sanding, I'm going to use this. I'm not, I've got here. A full set of Infinity sanding sticks. There's one missing because I've taken it out. And there's a 400 grit there. It's a new one ready to go in. But this is a full set of Infinity sanders. This is about 60 or 70 pounds on premium hobbies there. If you want to get these, don't forget, use the code NMB10 and you'll get 10% off. That's NMB10. Nigel's Mod Dimension 10. But that's premium hobbies down in Western Supermare. They currently only sell within the UK. But I believe he is starting to look at venturing further afield. But um, that there, as I say, that's about £70 worth there. So I'm not expecting you to go and spend £8.99 on a, pack, on a kit and then spend £70 on sanders. So what I'm going to use is this. And this is a Tesco um, professional nail file. And the reason I choose these is because they are very, very good because they're flat. Okay? They're flat and they're hard. If you start using sponges and soft like nail files and all that, you won't get nice clean sprue connection sand offs. And I'll show you in a minute why. And then the other thing I might well use is this thousand grit sponge if I need to just clean up something on a radius. But I'm going to try and avoid using it. And that's what I'm going to try and use as a minimum. And then as far as consumable goes, obviously there's going to be your paint of choice if you're going to paint or not paint. The paints you might want to use, Ravel, Tamiya, all the millions of different paints you can get. I'm not going to do any painting in this video. This is not about how to paint. This is about how to put a model together. Um, and then when it comes to holding parts, we're obviously going to use ordinary clothes pegs. OK, uh, we're going to use tape. This is um, Tamiya 10 millimeter masking tape. Absolutely brilliant stuff. You can also get it in 18 millimeter wide and you can also get it in 
six millimeter wide and they're the three common sizes that you can get from your local hobby craft store six ten eighteen and these are the ones with the dispensers you can just buy them like this uh, where is one here i've only got loads of them here's one you just come in a refill like that so you can just buy them like that and use them off the reel if you want to but the idea is you buy them like this in these in these boxes in these cases and then when you refill just buy these so there we go um, and as i say they're all available from premium hobbies as well or if you're in the UK, you've got a local hobby craft or something there, there as well. So um, that should just about do it. So as I say, I'm going to may, may use this sponge, but I'm going to try and avoid it. As for glue, uh, as I say, I don't like using the Airfix stuff that comes in the starter sets. I, I can't get on with it. I find it doesn't really work very well, probably because it has to meet health and safety standards for youngsters to do the models. So they probably can't put anything in the box that could be harmful or blah, 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 whatever. Um, this is my go-to cement, and this is pretty much every modeler's go-to cement, Tamiya Extra Thin. And this is the ordinary one. This is one of the dark green label. You can get one here, you can see in the holder. This is the light green label, and this is the Tamiya Th Extra Thin. And on the bottom here it says, as you can see there, it says quick setting. It's very, very hot. I'm not going to be using that in this build, I don't think. So there's the glue I'm going to use. Right, there is a problem with this, and I'm going to cover it straight away before we get going. When you buy this, you can see the jar. It's very difficult to show you, but the jar is full up to where my finger is now. OK, so that's how much. So when you take the when you take the brush out of the bottle. OK, you have a lot of glue on that holder. You can see it all on here. OK, you can see it on my finger now where it's shiny. All right. You want to try and avoid that. So what you do, the first time you get some, you need to find something like an old paint jar, something that you can put a tight lid on that's res resilient to this. So obviously not anything plastic, but you need to get rid of some of that glue. OK, and then have it like half full. And whenever you've used one up, don't ever throw the old jars away. They're handy for all sorts of other stuff, which we can go into another time. But basically, I like to have this. I'll put this down or I'll put my finger. I like to run it at that level. And then when, obviously I've been tipping this around, so let me take this brush out a second, let me clean it off. Where's my cloth gone? I had a cloth here earlier. Let me just give that a wipe off so it's dry. Okay. So what I like to do is have it so that when I'm actually using the glue, obviously you don't screw the lid on every time you take the, the brush out. You just put, the, you put it back on like that. What I like to do is have it so that the bristles are wet you can see this shaft here, this area, it's all dry. And then you don't run the risk of having it drip off while you're actually using it. OK, so you'll sometimes see me shaking the bottle. That's when it's low and I'm trying to get it up. And sometimes what happens is you end up with a great big globule of glue. Like you can see there on that brush and that will drip off onto your model. And no, it won't drip on the inside of a wing section. No, it won't drip off onto the bench. It will drip off onto your canopy or where it can do the most damage. And that's what they call sod's law. So there we are. So we've got our cutters. We've got our knife. We've got our sander. We've got our tape, tweezers, clamps and our glue. You'll see me using this out of this dispenser purely because it's easy to knock these over when they're on their own. You can get all sorts of different holders to stop them getting knocked over. I tend to use this one all the time. This is obviously premium hobbies. And um, this is the, the Tamiya. It's called a Tamiya 3. And we've got the extra thin quick set in the ordinary extra thin. And this is the white glue. And this is like a much, much thicker glue, which is good for like wings and stuff. We, we won't use it in this build. I'm going to stick to one glue only. I'm going to try and keep it so that you have to buy the minimum of stuff to follow along with this build if you want to. I'm not doing what some other people do. You are some other people up with their channels on YouTube and they take a kit like this and they glue it together and they use the Airfix glue and they use the Airfix paint and they brush paint it and they say, look at that. And I'm not doing that. I'm going to show you how to do one of these and build it as if it was a £200 kit. OK, so let me get myself cleared up and I'll come straight back and we'll make a start. OK, so first things first, look through your instructions. OK, um, one point to note down here, Airfix always put their instructions on this under instructions. Surfaces to be painted should be clean before parts removed with the sprue wash in warm soapy water, rinse and dry thoroughly, stir paints thoroughly before use. Now, this is something that a lot of people say you should do. I actually say you should do it. 
but often don't. Okay, um, the reason for it is the tools that these are made in have a lot of moving parts in them and are therefore lubricated. Some moulds also require a release agent which is like a WD-40 sort of thing, you spray in the mould and obviously then you get that on the plastic parts. So if you're going to go painting your parts you may find you have a problem. Now if the parts feel okay and they don't look greasy you might choose not to wash them. If you do want to wash them warm soapy water, literally just warm, not, not at all hot. A uh, bit of fairy liquid, a bit of washing up liquid, swirl them around a bit. Best to do it in a bowl because any parts that fall off them will be caught and they won't go down the plug hole. Um, and then just let them st stay in that warm water for half an hour, hour, whatever, and then take them out, rinse them off, and then just stand them to let them air dry. You will see some water marks on the parts, but that doesn't really matter. But um, I'm not going to do it in the, on this occasion because it's such a small kit and there's not really a lot to it and I don't see any oil or anything on the parts. The other thing we will we'll do anyway, because of the, our skin oils and stuff, we're going to give the model a clean before we start to paint the whole thing anyway because we want to make sure that the surface is nice and clean. So I'll just wipe it over with some alcohol or whatever straight away there. I'm talking about another thing I haven't told you about. So I'll wipe it over some alcohol and we'll go from there. So you don't need to wash the parts if you don't really want to, but it's a good idea if you do. Um, so we've got here, we've got the information on here about the actual um, the aircraft itself. And then when we turn over, it will give you some hints and tips about what you should do. And it's going to tell you to, you know, um, study the instructions, make sure you scrape paint away from parts that have to be glued together. All parts are numbered, paint parts before assembly. Uh, and then it's telling you how to apply the decals. Down here, you've got the legend. This is the assembly icon instructions. So basically, if you look here, you can see there's a great big question mark. And the question mark means alternative parts provided. Well, in this case, it's not alternative parts provided. It's alternative parts not provided because they're telling you that the stand is available separately. So they're telling you to drill a hole there if you're going to use a stand. But if you're not going to use a stand, don't drill the hole. OK, this one here, this is the assembly face. So you can see this here, this triangle with the one in it, that's telling you that that part there is from here. This is step one. OK, that's where that's from. And then with Airfix instructions, they always in the next stage, if you're looking at something, you're not quite sure. Like if you look at this and you can't quite work out where that's going, look at the next stage, you'll see it in red. OK, so they always show you in the next stage what you've just done in red. So that's a really nice touch. Like here you can see this tank's going on there. There it is in red. You're fitting this uh, spar into there. There it is in red. You fit in all this and that light. There it is in red. OK, these numbers here refer to paint colours. So if you see just numbers on their own with nothing around them, that's a code for a humble paint colour. 56, I believe, is aluminium. I believe 56 is. See, they haven't got 56 on here. So they're telling you lies. Hmm. They're telling you in here what you need. But these are the main colours. So they are, they are saying 56 there. So I've got this chart, which is like a cross referencing thing. And Humbrol 56 is indeed aluminium, so you've got all the different colours down there you can use if you've got those charts. Um, they were available in a very old um, um, a Tamiya model aircraft magazine. Or what was it, model aircraft? Yeah, model airplane magazine. So first thing to do, familiarise yourself with the instructions. Make sure you understand what's going on and make sure that if you want to sort of do something different, that it's all going to be OK. Like you might decide that you want to build this radiator first because you've got to do some silver painting, so you want to get them painted at the same time. So you can look at this and make sure it's not going to confuse it, and you can see that that's going to be okay, because you're going to assemble that and then glue it to the bottom of the fuselage. So it doesn't really matter when you do it, as long as you do it before that step. So familiarising ourselves, we're going to decide, are we going to have the wheels up, or are we going to have the wheels down? If we're going to have the wheels up, we're going to have to make that hole and get hold of a stand from somewhere. If we're having the wheels down, we don't make that hole, we don't need a stand. There you go. Are we going to put the pilot in? I mean, here we're putting the pilot in at the end. Normally you would put the pilot in right at the front, but we're putting the pilot in the end. So are we going to have the canopy open or are we going to have it closed? We, we may not be able to have it open. We shall have to wait and see. Um, and as far as optional parts go, it's a very simple kit. Um, there are optional parts on the sprues that aren't called out. Like for instance, this, this model has a, um, a twin bladed prop. There's also a triple bladed prop with spinner there. 
So this is obviously for a Mark II, which would have a different fuselage. So there we are, and, and wings. Um, so as I say, familiarize yourself, make sure you understand what's going on. Until you've done that, don't do anything. So what we can do now is crack on with the build. The only thing I've got to say, if you see me using a tool that I haven't mentioned two minutes ago, then tell me in the comments below because I deserve a slap. Right, so there we are. Um, so the first thing we've got to do is get our parts off and it's telling us here to paint them. Now, my advice is don't paint them now because as you can see here, this is 56. This is 56. That's going to get glued into there. This area in here, which is above there, is 56. All of this is 56. This is 56. So I'm going to be using an airbrush to spray paint. You may be brush painting with your favourite paint, which is absolutely fine. As I say, this is not anything to do with painting. This is all about the building. So imagine, for all intents and purposes, I'm building this without painting it. So my, in my opinion, at whatever level you're at, the best thing to do to guarantee a good joint, to guarantee having no glue seams in your paintwork, is to build as much as you can before you paint it. Okay, because otherwise, if I paint all these parts first, I'm going to have glue marks where I glue them on. So if I glue them all together in first and end up with this here, which is basically the undercarriage bay, I can get in there and paint all that and have no glue marks to clean up at all. So that's what I'm going to do. So first things first, I've got to go and find part number A3 and B2. And when you look on here, I think this was A, wasn't it? Yes. So we've got sprue A. You can see on there, there is an A. What you can do is put a piece of masking tape on to make life easier going forward. Just get a piece of masking tape, wrap it around like that, try and get it to line up nicely without pushing it together. Try and get it to line up nicely like so. And then you can just take a black marker and put an A. And that makes it a lot easier to see. I don't ever bother because I find I familiarise myself and I get to learn which is which. So we've got here part number A3 is what we want. So I'm going to come along with my cutters. In fact, first time I do this, I'll use the cheaper cutters and then I'll use my nicer ones. So we've got to come along with our cutters. And what I'm going to do is come in here. I'm not going right up to the part. Okay, I'm going to lay back and leave some on there. Okay, just like so. Now what's happening with these cutters, because of the angle on the inside, you can see what it's doing. As I close the blade, it's pushing itself down. So it's pushing itself a lot closer to the part than I would like. So what I could have done was turn them around and cut the other way, but then it might have pushed it, it might have cut into there. Then the next part we want is B2. So I believe this is sprue B. No, that's sprue C. That's sprue D. So this one must be B. No, that's sprue E. So here's B. B2. There's two there. So what I could do with these is turn them the other way and cut like that, and that leaves that leaves some of the sprue on there. Okay, so we've got those two parts off. All right, now. I may actually have to change my board because you can't really see one. You can't see those on the back of there, can you? We shall see. Um, so what I'm going to do now is use my knife to remove the excess. And what I'm doing, I'm cutting away from myself. Okay, now you'll often see me cut towards myself. It's because I've been doing this for 54 years and I've got lots of experience of it and everything. So I just find it easier to cut it like that. Okay, and you can see there we've removed that, and then on this one here, on this tiny little oxygen tank, you can see I've got a sprue nib sticking out there. So I'm just going to remove some of it, and then using the knife, I'm going to clean up and just remove the excess. Okay, and there we go. And now what I'm going to do here. It's coming from the other side and remove the excess from there. And we've got a mould seam around there so I'm just going to scrape the knife around there just to remove the mould seam. You don't need to worry about that. So we've got this part here 
A3 so I'm going to have it with that lug facing upwards and then we've got this tank here and it's showing how it goes so with that lug facing upwards this tank is going to sit is it going to sit like that that's good it's a nice tight fit so it stays there on its own so you can see there we've got that tank on there and as you can see just that it's shown us in the instructions here we've got that up in the air okay and this is the beauty of the liquid cement what you do is you come along and you actually apply the cement with the brush after you've put the parts together and in this case it was good because they were tight enough to stay together with no glue on there. I'm just going to give it a little push and there you are, you can see that is now in. Okay. Now, where we had, where this came apart, you can see we have a sprue nib. There's a sprue nib there and there. And when you actually look at the drawing, you can see that there and there, there's nothing. So we've got to completely get rid of it. So I'm going to use my Tesco nail file and just gently sand to get rid of that sprue nib. Now a little tip, something if you want to try it, if you're worried about taking too much plastic off, get a pencil or a pen. I recommend using a pencil rather than a pen. Just make a pencil mark on the surface, just like I've done there. See the pencil mark? And then using the sanding stick, I can come on and then I can see, I can see when it's nice and flat. I can see over there I've still got some sprue nib on there, so I'm just going to remove that. Having these little bits of sprue nib on here will completely mess up your build. It's very important to get rid of them, but you don't want to remove too much. So that's stage one done. Okay, so stage two, we now need the lower ring, which is part C12. Obviously I can see the lower wing, I don't need to look at letters. So that sprue nib there is already broken off. I'm gonna stop using these cutters because I have this problem. What I can do is come along and cut it off there. Cut it off there, 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 and there. Oops. And there and then I can see if I can get in and actually cut these off without the cutters sliding right over to the plastic you see on there it's it's forcing me to cut right close to the plastic and I don't want to do that so what I'll do is I'll turn them around cut them like that There we go. So you can see there we've got some fairly large-ish sprue nibs on there. So we've just cut off the, the excess, leave a tiny little bit on there. And then using the knife, just clean up. It's sort of a three-stage process, you, well four-stage. You cut it off the sprue, leaving a big nib on there. Then you cut the nib off so it's smaller. Then you come along with your knife and cut that smaller bit down so there's hardly anything left at all. And then you use your sander. Now we've got all these little bits of plastic here we need to get rid of. I have an old little bin, little plastic jar next to me for my rubbish. This is always handy. And then again using this stick. Just going to remove, if you notice I'm not going to get into it because I'll remove too much plastic. This is, this is the Airfix very soft plastic, so you need to be careful. Okay. So then we've got a bit on the trailing edge there. You can just generally feel it with your fingernail. Or in my case, what you've got left of a fingernail after you've bitten your hands to pieces. And there we go. So that's our lower wing there, all cleaned up. 
you come on your finger now you can feel there's a bit of a step there now I'm not going to worry about that too much and the reason is we're going to be gluing this together with the upper wings and then we're going to be doing the seam so I'm not going to worry about having sprue nibs on there as long as there's nothing on this surface so I'm just going to quickly with my sanding stick just go over I'm making sure I'm working between these you see these pins here these location pins I'm not sanding those away I'm just going in between and just sanding away and just making sure there's no big lumps or bumps on there or anything okay so there's our lower wing so we've got our part now as per the instructions we've got part C12 and it's telling us we've got to fit this in now you can notice that on here you have this step section here which is pointing upwards so we've got the step section there which is pointing upwards so that is going to fit into there and we've got these two little raised areas here and here and they are going to fit into those two notches there and there okay right so how is that going to go in there now it looks as though straight away we have a problem where it's bent it kind of looks like this part has a bow in it so I'm going to grab a straight edge No, it's it doesn't look too bad actually. It has a little bit of a bow in it. I'm just going to give it a tweak, just like so. There we go. That's better. That's better. You can see now. The problem I had before. You can see in here we have this this line here going along and that is where that is where the actual part will fit so there we go you can see this part has actually sprung back so I'm going to give it a little tweak again it doesn't really matter it's just that I'm showing you what I'm trying to do is show you what you can do you know what it what is feasible what is possible it's not wanting to fit in there at all I've just noticed as well I've got some sprue nibs there I haven't sanded out and I'm glad in a way this has happened now if you look in here we have a problem because we only have one sanding stick and we can't use anything else and if I start sanding there I'm going to lose this detail on this raised edge here so what you can do is come along with an old pair of scissors and cut your sanding stick cut a couple of inches off the end and then you can cut it down and you can make yourself a narrow file for getting into smaller areas Okay. I bet no one showed you that before. Right, so I've got a problem here with this not being flat. And it keeps bending itself back. So I'm going to pull it over and make sure it's... Right, now it should fit. And this, I think, is one of the problems. I'm not knocking Airfix at all, but this is... I have always said with Airfix, they do the 170 second scale starter sets. I would thoroughly recommend anybody that's a beginner, a new new person to the hobby, I would thoroughly recommend go and buy yourself a 148th kit because you'll find it a lot easier to build. The parts are bigger and it won't be anything like as fiddly. Now I think what's happening here, it's kind of being sprung at the ends, it's being pushed together at the ends which is making it bow just don't get it you see and this is one of the problems I have with Airfix starter sets I'm here with 54 years experience in modeling 
and the second part I go to glue together I've got a problem with it. Now you see this tab on the top. This tab on the top may have to line up with something and if that is glued in in the wrong place it may affect how the wing fits to the fuselage. So I'm kind of a bit sort of concerned about how this should go together. Um, let me just check that is straight there isn't it? Yeah that's straight. I'm going to try and show you how to get out of this because you may well want to go and buy this very same kit. I've got a feeling that maybe these ends are pushing it together so let's just grab our sanding stick and just remove some plastic from there and from the side there. Remove some from there and from there. As you can see, every time I put it in, it's pulling itself back. So what we need to do is straighten it out again. You see, believe me, if you go and buy that 148th Airfix Sea King that I'm building, there are no problems like this in that. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is just to apply cement to the ends. Let that sit in there. And then push that over so that the end is glued in. Okay, we'll put some more cement in here. And then I'm going to grab a, a peg. If I can get it to hold on there, I can't get it to hold on there, so I'll get a wooden clothes peg which I reversed and I'll show you in a minute how to make these. Nothing wants to stay on there. So get another one of these at the end. I will just leave that to dry, it doesn't want to stay on there does it? Oh dear. I did not expect to run into problems like this. But as I say guys, this is one of my big issues with Airfix starter sets which is what this could be because they sell this kit as a starter set and um, it frightens me because you know people with little experience or no experience will get something like this and they'll find it really difficult and I mean this is the second part I'm gluing together so this is the this is the issue I have right so I've only glued the ends and then if that tab it looks like that tab is going to slot into the front of that wing there so if that's going to cause an issue, I don't want to glue it in that position now because it will cause us problems later down the line. But at the moment, it's free to move. So I've only glued the ends. I've glued here. Okay, I've glued down there, down there, and just down on those corners there. And not glued the middle at all, so the middle is free to move. All right. So that was a palaver, wasn't it? Right. So... These clothes pegs, basically you take a normal commoner garden clothes peg. I'm going to put this back together now like so. Okay, so that's going to go again like that. Right, so we've got a normal commoner garden clothes peg here. All right, and one of the problems is the end is all blunt and they're too big and everything. And they haven't got much clamping pressure. So if you take them apart, okay, get out. Take them apart, and then what you're going to do, you're going to put the spring. What am I doing? You're going to put the spring into that groove there, like so. 
and let the spring sit in that groove there where that part of the spring used to go. So that is actually, you can see, that spring is sitting in that groove. And then I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to hold the spring in place. I get it underneath this one. The camera's on, so it's going to play up. There we go, get that underneath there. Slide that along. And there we go, we've made a reverse peg. And now we've got a little fine end on it. And then we can, um, you can clamp stuff in, in tight spaces and he's got more clamping force as well. So there we go. Um, right, so that's going to be drying. Now what we can do now is come along and look at stage three. And we've got part A5, A6 and C10. So here's A5. Sorry, there's A. I'm going to go to my Tamiya cutters now. So we've got five and six here. So these are the outside walls. So what I'm going to do, oh, not the outside walls at all. I was going to write a number on them, but we can remember which is which. Or what you can do is just take one off the sprue, and leave it there. Now I'm going to come along and you can see how much easier it is with these Tamiya cutters. Just remove the sprue and then just sand away till that sprue nib is gone. Do the same here. There we are. And then this is A5, the one that's still on the sprue is A6, so that's going to go that way round. You can see here we've got the plain side is outwards, the detailed side, which is that side. That side there is facing inwards. So this one's going to go in this side, like so. Okay. I can't quite see how that's going to fit around this other part. So I'm going to get C10 off. C, and there's 10 there. So we get 10 off the sprue. Leave some sprue nib on there. And then I'm going to cut away a large chunk of the sprue nib. You can see here we have the sprue nib there. I'm going to come along. I'm going to go a little way away. And just and then what I can do is come along with the knife, remove most of it, just like so. You can see we've still got a witness of a sprue nib there. So the sanding stick, we'll just get rid of that. Again, you notice I'm not just tearing in there, gently stroking the stick over the surface. So then this one's going to go. You can see we've got the curved the, the curved um, the angled top up and that is going to fit in there and as you can see it's narrower than the bit it's got to go into so we, what we're going to do is slot this in first so that's going to go in there okay and this is again what I'm saying you see these tiny little parts you know a, a beginner is going to struggle <laughs> So I'm going to put some cement in there, or glue, or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to grab this with my tweezers and just drop that into there, like so. And you can see that because that front bulkhead isn't straight, what it's doing is it's forcing this one back. So I'm going to try again. By now the glue will have probably will dried out. Yes it has. Let's try and get it in there a bit quicker this time, the right way around Nigel. There There we go. That's gone in and it's staying there. All right, and then we can come along with our extra thin and just put some in there and up there. And then just make sure it's staying in position. There we go. So we get the other one off quickly. That was A6, C6. It was A, wasn't it? Yeah, A6. Get this one off. Just 
just like that. Remove the excess. And then sand away the excess to get a nice flat face. Just test fit it. Always dry fit parts first. Yep, that's going in there fine. So in fact I can probably put that in there. Goes in there fine upside down even. In fact it fits better upside down than it does the right way up. So I can probably hold that in place. Grab my extra thin, put some in there. And then just work it into position with it stuck to the tweezers. Like so. Again, that front bulkhead is bent, so it's not wanting to fit properly. There we go, got it in there. Okay. So what's happening is you have these legs here. These legs here go up against that bulkhead and because that bulkhead is bent back it's pushing these pieces out. Okay so now that they're both in I'm going to put some extra thin on these little front bits here and these legs and on these little legs here and there. I must say it's very nicely detailed for a 70 second scale kit but I just think it's all a bit too fiddly for a newbie. And then this piece here is going to drop down in between them. You can see we've got a, a leg here and a leg there for it to sit against. So that's going to go in like that. And we can just get our extra thin, run that down there. Job done. Okay, and I'm also going to run some in the sides, just like so. And there we go. So there you can see our undercarriage bay is pretty much done. Now, before the glue dries, you can see what's happening here. This upper wing section is going to go down onto that. So before the glue dries, what we can do is cut this one off, our upper wing section. Just like so. Remove the excess sprue nibs. Leaving a little bit on there. And you can see here that these, these are actually proud on the surface. So they're going to have to be sanded off before any assembly takes place. Right. So what we can do here is get our pencil. Colour in the area around the sprue nib and then with our sanding stick this is why I say it's good to have something flat and hard because we can sand that just like so. I'll show you what happens if you use a sponge. Perhaps I'll get a coarser sponge than that. Okay, this is an 800 grit. And what that sponge is doing is sanding there, there, and the nib. Because it's not hard. You can see what's happening as I push that down in. You can see it's actually pushing the sponge away from this area and it's sanding there and there. That's why I say use a hard stick, don't use something soft. Whereas this, it is only sanding that nib. You can see the pencil is still there. I'm just going to keep stroking over it. 
till all the pencil is gone and then I know that area is dead flat. And I know then when I come to fit it together, it's going to fit perfectly. Another little quick thing you might want to do, go along here with a pencil all the way around there and then with your sanding stick just lightly sand away and that will find you any areas that are not flat. You can see we've got the big edge of an ejector pin mark sticking out there so we're going to cut that away. We don't want that in our way do we? And I'm just literally resting, you can see how much force I'm putting on, I'm just literally resting it on, not pushing it at all. And you can see here we've got a little raised area there where it's shiny. So we're going to sand that out because that's going to affect the way our widget fits together. And there we go. So that should now fit on there beautifully. Okay, as you can see, we've got a problem. I can push the ends of the wings together, but something's holding us off in the middle. What is it? What is holding us off? I can see what it is. You have this raised area here, but it may even be that ejector pin mark that's not helping. You have this raised area here, and that has to go down between these walls. So it's got to fit in front of that bulkhead and inside those two side panels. So what we've got to do is get it together and see where it's not fitting together. And I can see it's that back wall that's causing the problem. So I'm just going to see if I can push that back a touch. Right. Okay, let me see if I can push the undercarriage bay together first. There we go, it seems to have gone together now. That is sitting on top. I'm not sure if that should sit inside or on top. If you just look at the next stage of the instructions, and they're not showing us the back edge, that's a shame. I wanted to see if that was supposed to sit on top of, or in front of that, um, that rear member there. And looking there, it looks like it's supposed to sit on top of it. So there we go. So yeah, these sides are slightly higher can see they're higher than that rear wall so that's okay so that's going to sit on top of there just like that but something I did notice on here back to the beginning, you can see here they're telling us in the instructions to paint this area here they're telling us to paint it you can see that on here we've got two big ejector pin marks. Those big circles, they are where big pins come and press the parts out of the mould tool. And they're not there, they're not supposed to be there. So what we can do is fill them. Now, I'm going to use something that I didn't talk about in my original tool bit, because I, wasn't, I was hoping to not have to do this. But ejector pin marks are very unsightly, they can cause issues. You can see here the inside wing is covered in them. Those circular marks, it's very difficult with this light grey plastic. Those circular marks, they are ejector pin marks and they are actually metal rods that push the part out of the mould tool when it's moulded. When they're in areas like this, they're unsightly but also, if I can catch it in the right light, you will see they have a raised edge around them. So they will affect the fit. So what you could do is just come along and gently cut them away with a knife, scrape them, whatever. But what I want to do is fill them. Now there's loads of different ways you can fill them. You can use filler, you can use Mr. Surfacer, you can use paint, you can use sprue goo, 
you can use all sorts but I want to start you off with a product which if you are keen on modeling you will never regret buying and this is this one here VMS Flexi 5k CA black thin you get it from premium hobbies when he's got it in stock when it comes in it's gone it is absolutely brilliant now I use a old Pringles lid and the reason I like this stuff over normal CA it's not hard and brittle like normal CA is so it doesn't just break it takes a little while to dry so you get some time to position your parts if you're using cyan acrylic glue you'll know this yourself if you use super glue in the past you put the two parts together that's it they're welded with this you've got a good few minutes to play with it um, it's black so you can see where it is rather than being clear and you don't find out until you've painted your model it dries fairly quickly and it doesn't dry rock hard like cyan acrylic glue does so it's quite easy to sand so what I'm going to do, in fact what I'll do, I will use a toothpick, because I'm not going to use another tool. I'm going to use a toothpick, and I'm just going to paddle this into that circular mark. I'll do the same over here. And then just put another drop on top and let it form like a dome, because it will shrink slightly as it dries. And that'll just save you having to come back and put another lot in. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. A little drop of super glue in there. Now, what I'm going to do now is give it a little bash of kicker. Just going to give it a light from a distance. Just spray it with some kicker. Let that go off, and then I'll sand that flat. So I'll see you back for sanding in a minute. All right, so you can see here how it's dried off, and it's all shiny. Okay, and that's going to work to our advantage in a minute. Now I'm going to get my pencil. Once again, I'm going to put some pencil lines on here. And then I'm going to use one of these little bits of stick I've cut off. In fact, no, I'll use the big one. Because it'll give me more holding area outside the wing. So what I'm going to do is just sand this gently. And as you can see, when I sand it, it goes from gloss to matte. So that means that if I see any glossy patches left over, Means I've got low spots so I can go back and fill them again but I'm just going to gently sand that gently sand it until all that pencil disappears and if I look at that ejector pin mark and I see no shiny bits and I can see a little shiny bit at the bottom there but that's going to be covered up by that um, by that cross member Come in here and sand away. Just remove until all the pencil is gone. you'll see is a nice sharp edge around the ejector pin mark because it will always be a sharp crisp edge there we go just a tiny little bit more and there we are they're gone now I said I might use a sponge and I'm going to use a sponge here only because I want to polish it I want to take away any scratches or marks that I put in there from the sanding so there we go and then when we put this on we can see that those ejector pin marks would have been very visible in the undercarriage bay especially as it's going to be painted silver because silver makes everything stick out like a sore thumb so there we are so that's how that's going to go together lovely right last thing i'm going to do in this video is fit this light on the bottom id light whatever it's called now i always cover this in my videos and everybody knows what i do if you look at this if you look at this clear part you will see that when you look at it you can see like a crow edge around everything because it's all shiny. So what I'm going to do is get a black felt tip pen and I'm going to go around there with my black felt tip pen. Can I get away with using this? Because I didn't say this at the beginning, did I? I hope I can get away without getting a, a rollick in for using this. So there we go, black felt tip pen. And what I've done is cut it in the side of that hole 
where that clear part's going to go. I'm also going to take my black, my black felt tip pen and make a right mess of my fingers. Or what I can do is grab a little piece of blue tack. You see, this is the trouble. When you make models, you forget how much stuff you actually do use. So that's black felt tip pen, super glue, and blue tack that I didn't even mention at the beginning. And we're only on step three. Okay, and what I'm doing is just colouring in around the edges of that clear part. I'm not worried about getting black pen on the face because it'd be easy to remove. Okay. And then we can take that off of there. And then we can put that into there and it's made, the top is made like an arrow so you can see which way it's supposed to be facing forward, which is quite clever. So that's that gone in there. Now a lot of people will tell you always glue clear parts with uh, white glue. I don't agree. What I do, just get them in position and just touch them and just leave that to dry. And there's a reason I put that in now because all this is going to be painted silver. I'm going to paint the back of that silver and then it will look like it's a light lens in there rather than just a clear piece of plastic looking into space. So I have now got to go away and get this this and this painted silver as per the instructions before we carry on and then we're going to go and actually do our rudders. Now I would carry on and glue this together. Where are we? I would carry on and glue this together and paint everything silver together because again you've got the the rudder pedals, the control column and the um, and the, the, the foot, footrest going in and they're all going to be painted aluminium as well so we could do all that no problem at all um, but the problem is if I put that over there like that I won't be able to get up inside and everything and it might look a bit dodgy so what I'm going to do is paint all this silver so I can get in on these angles first before we glue it all together and then what we'll do is we'll put all that on the top and then we'll paint all that together. So we'll do it as two lots. So I'll get the silver work done and then I'll come back and see you in part two for some more assembly. I won't do any assembly on this model off camera. I don't think. Um, I'll do painting off camera because this is not about painting. And then um, what I'll do is just come back on this. When you see the light grey mat, that means we're doing video builds. And I know this is light grey plastic against the light grey mat. But that's how it is guys, this is the map for doing beginner's videos. I'm doing all this up here, and when I'm up here it doesn't matter really matter what kind of the mat is. So uh, there we go. So I'll see you for part two after I've done this silver paint. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.